there isn't even any way to make fun of this. This is the fun. This is the fun in and of itself. The guy is mocking himself. Well, I don't normally like to pick apart individual people, but I just stumbled upon the channel of Jeffrey Prather, who seems to be a great example of how not to teach armed martial arts. And I just have to comment on some of the stuff. I deliberately did not look him up because this is not about his character beyond what his teachings tell us about that, I suppose. But attack the argument, not the person. That's what I always advocate. And that's what I'm going to stick to is take a look at what's happening here. Sort this <laughs> arm. All right, so let's unpack this. First off, unarmed against armed defenses are basically 99% bullshit by default, the way you often see it. And so here's the first problem. Single arm against two arms is a gamble, to say the least, especially if the opponent is stronger. But he doesn't even do that right, because the thing is, there is a chance of stopping a two-handed sword cut with one hand if you do it in a structurally sound way. If you extend the arm and actually use your skeletal structure rather than just the force of your muscles. Because if you actually extend it, now you can push with your entire body against that. The, the weight of your entire body is behind your hand. The way he's doing it, he's got the arm bent. So that's not happening. If you look at historical dagger defenses, quite often you see two hands used against one. You know, the opponent steps in with a dagger with a single handed thrust and they catch it with both hands to be sure that they can definitely stop that attack, even if the opponent is physically stronger. This is the reverse of that. <laughs> Let me just take away my chance of dealing with this by doing it in a half-assed way. Next problem. His counterattack is punching the guy in a crotch. Okay, very painful. But relying on pain compliance when you're trying to save yourself from a weapon attack is reckless to say the least because you don't know what the opponent's pain threshold is. Like There are guys who will literally just get pissed off if you kick or punch them in the balls. And guess what? Now he'll really want to bisect you. You haven't dealt with the weapon. You haven't done anything to structurally disable the attacker. Pain compliance is not the way to go here. Plus, on top of that, of course, all of this only works because he moves faster than the poor guy that he's demonstrating this crap on. Just look at this. The other guy moves in slow motion, basically. Whereas he moves at regular speed. Guess what? If the other guy was actually intent on cutting him with a sword, there's no way he would get away with this. There's a video on my channel about defending against a sword with a dagger, which shows up in Fiore's manuscript. And we show the problems with that. Like, in theory, it's possible, again, if you do it in a structurally sound manner, but in practical terms against somebody who is not comatose with a sword, this is extremely difficult because guess what? The sword fighter is not going to just either just stand there or move in slow motion and let you do whatever the hell you want. They're going to respond to what you're doing. They have all the reach. And even if you're trying to move in, Guess what? Any kind of footwork that you're using, the swordsman can use too. So I come in. That's the theory. If I just, just thrust. I'm done. Thrust. I'm dead. This is just, like, this is the best I can hope for. If I know exactly the angle at which you're cutting, I know how I have to push against the flat and push it out of the way. In theory, if his, his angle is just a little bit different than what I expect. This is, again, this is cutting right through my arm, probably, and still into my head. You have to rely on being faster 
than them. You have to be able to surprise them, etc. But since they've already got the sword raised and are clearly about to attack you, they're aware of you, they're watching you, unless you're the Flash, this is going to be very difficult. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you're all smug about it, we get See it. See here? See here? Okay, and now we've got the problem once again that I've mentioned before. Unlimited action points. So, this... The other guy has just performed one action. Okay? An attempted sword cut, one action. See here? See and now he just stops. Now we have this punch. See here? Second action, third action. So you're, he's doing at least three actions for the swordsman's one. It's not happening. He's not just going to be frozen just because you just punched him in the balls. Not in a, in a life or death kind of situation. And in any kind of context, historical fantasy, etc., what have you, you wouldn't just try to attack an unarmed person with a sword unless you meant it. There's clearly something going on here. This guy wants him dead. And he's not just going to stop. Okay, now we've got Naginata versus multiple swordsmen. Just, just look at this non-committal, passive, Okay, guess it's time to get shoved around. Like... Nobody acts like that in actual combat they, come on so it starts out okay so basically he hits the guy in the front in the face with the butt end of the weapon and then he puts it over his arms to control them all right fair enough that's good then <laughs> he shoves him in the way of the other guy who does absolutely nothing he, he reacts the way a potato would if you shove another potato into it. He's not adjusting what he's doing at all. He's not avoiding the other guy. He's not even adjusting the sword cut that he attempted. The other guy, again, is not at all adjusting his course of action. He's coming in there, you know, he, he's still aiming for the spot that, that Jeffrey stood at a moment ago. So here, you can see. He's standing in the spot that he's trying to attack now. He moved away. The guy is still attacking the same spot that he already moved away from. What are you doing? Plus, he's now striking the other guy's sword. It's like, okay, yeah, if you're surrounded by a bunch of puppets <laughs> who just do what you told them for the demonstration, sure, yeah. And then they go limp ragdoll right here. Now... Okay, this this guy gets gets struck in the head with a Naginata. Yeah, he, he's probably done. And then <laughs> the other two just stand there. They just hang out there like, okay, I guess it's cuddle time. It's like, oh, come on. And you're in grappling distance right now. What are you doing? Use your reach. You have a pole arm. Okay, against multiple opponents, you want to keep them at bay. Here's an example of that in sparring. You want to make them worried about approaching you because they're entering the death zone, basically, where your pole arm can really mess with them and they can't defend against it effectively because of the superior leverage of a pole arm against a sword. So they have to team up and they have to actually use tactical movement to get around you. One needs to keep you occupied and ideally try to bind your pole arm while the others circle around and try to attack you from the side or the rear. They're not going to just bunch up and just be a pile of, of useless goons the way it happens here. Then we've got some staff shenanigans in the most artificial setup I've seen in a long time. So his opponent puts down the staff for some reason. He's standing there with a staff on the floor at his feet for some reason in a very particular position. <laughs> he sh I, I, I'm sorry, I need a moment. How, how am I even supposed to comment on this? He shoves it around with his foot. And now the other guy is paralyzed for half an hour. 
<laughs> because he knocked the sword, the staff aside, <laughs> with his foot. And now we are going to get some real action here. So he kicks up the staff. The other guy is so limp. I I mean, I I, I literally don't even know how to describe this. Like, th there, there isn't even any way to make fun of this. This is the fun. This is the fun in and of itself. The guy is mocking himself. Like, yeah, let, let me just toss a staff on you and you're going to drop your staff because the weight of the staff hits it. You, you... Are we supposed to believe that this guy is so disabled that he cannot, <laughs> he can't hold on to the weight of his staff and another? Like... How, how are we supposed to take this? And he's still paralyzed. He, he casually walks over him, over toward him. The guy is still paralyzed. And then he does whatever. He, he steps on it, he does some bullshit. The other guy is still paralyzed. He's like, oh, I can't believe he tossed a staff onto my staff. I am completely devastated. Wait, I think we're missing something here. I think... There was a step happening before that. So I think the, the, the point here is if you're facing an opponent with a staff, first, you got to sneak up on them from behind with a syringe loaded with heroin and you got to inject them with like a shit ton of heroin. And then you casually walk over to where you left your staff. So you have both hands free to grab him and inject him. And then, you know, you wait for the the effect to happen so the guy supports himself on the staff because he's so high he can barely stand and now you can do your bullshit and at this point he's just so wasted he can't do anything now i got it believe it or not i saved the best for last what if you get attacked with a sword while you're carrying a log a log with a string on it, no less. Reach, go ahead, bring it around. Just out of reach, come around. Boom. Boom. Boom, boom, indeed. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> he just keeps going, he's not even done. So once again, the old, assume the opponent is asleep. So uh, let's just ignore the fact that this guy is just carrying around a log for no reason. <laughs> let's just assume that's his oversized anime sword. Maybe that makes a little more sense. So our friend Jeffrey here is allowed to move at almost normal speed while the other guy has to move like he's underwater. Just out of reach. Just out of reach. Um, let's see that again. Look at where his other hand is. Look at where his left hand is and where the tip of the other guy's sword is. The other dude literally had to freeze to not hit his hand in the demonstration. You're within reach. The guy's gonna cut your hand in half. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then he's doing all this bullshit while the other guy's just standing there. Bonk. Yeah, sure. If, if you smash someone over the head with a log of this size, of course they're gonna be done. But guess what? You're never gonna get there. No way. No freaking way. Like, for one, <laughs> aside from the whole absurdity of the situation, if you have a freaking heavy-ass log on your shoulder, your opponent knows what's going to happen because you will drop it vertically like he did. That's pretty much the only thing you can do with a clunky object like that. And guess what? Verticals are the easiest to dodge. All you need is move just a little bit off to the side and it misses. Whereas if you want to dodge a diagonal attack, you actually have to do lateral movement, you know, move forward and to the side in the direction of the swing, because otherwise, if you move this way, guess what? The diagonal swing is gonna follow you. Anyway, before I rant some more, I'm done here. This is, this is enough mental torment for one video. So yeah, let me know which of these brilliant techniques you would use against an armed attack. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.